Did you think 32 gigabytes was enough RAM in 2023? <laughs> <laughs> Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay guys, today is definitely going to be a very controversial video as, let's be honest, 32 gigabytes of RAM in 2023 should definitely be enough, but there were some signs that maybe this wasn't always the case, so I decided to go ahead and actually investigate. Now, what prompted me to investigate this is that when my friends and I were playing games, we noticed that Windows was caching an absolutely absurd amount of memory. My friends who were using 32 gigabytes of RAM were noticing it was basically caching their entire amount of memory, and I was seeing even sometimes upwards of close to that 64 gigabytes that I was using. Now, I do want to let you guys know caching does not necessarily mean that it's going to actually use that memory. In fact, the amount of memory in use is well, well below 32 gigabytes when running games and the vast majority of programs. However, it does seem odd to me that Windows would be caching a bunch of stuff if it didn't think there was some sort of performance or other benefit to doing so. So I reached out to Corsair and asked them for a 32 gigabyte, a 64 gigabyte, and a 96 gigabyte kit, which they did actually go ahead and send over. So thank you to Corsair for providing the kits today. And if you are interested in upgrading your RAM by the end of this video, which we'll see whether or not it's actually worth it, I do suggest going ahead and taking a look at some Corsair memory, which I have linked in the description below for them actually making this video possible. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, this is going to be a quick couple of tests here, guys, and there definitely could be more investigation that's needed before we make any, you know, final conclusions. And I do also want to let you guys know that this was done on a system that had a very, very dirty install of Windows. It hadn't been refreshed in over a year, I think, and there's just so much junk on this Windows install that, yeah, it probably should have been cleaned up. And if you clean up your Windows install regularly, you may have different results than what I found. However, with that being said, the other specs in the system are a 7900 XTX and also a 7800 X3D for the CPU. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the results and see whether or not is 32 gigabytes really still enough? Is there any benefit for gaming and workstation applications if you choose to go for a higher capacity in 2023 on Windows 11? Well, first starting off with Puget Bench on Photoshop here, surprisingly, there was actually a benefit from going from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes and even 64 to 96 gigabytes. And because that's the case, and by the way, guys, these are all 6,400 megahertz kits that I ran at XMP. But in any case, there was at most, when we compare the 96 to the 32 gigabyte kit, just a 10% difference. So not a huge difference, but hey, if time is money, there is, it appears to be somewhat of a benefit for having more memory in Photoshop. But what about Puget Bench? in Premiere Pro. And here I found basically no difference between the three kits, which is very interesting as you'd think that video would actually be more demanding, but this seems to show the opposite. But what about games? I mean, surely there can't be any benefit going above 32 gigabytes. And you might be surprised because taking a look first here at Apex Legends, what I found was the average frame rate was basically identical between all three kits, and the 1% lows were a little bit higher on the 64 and 96 gigabyte kits, but it wasn't a lot. I mean, in a best case scenario, 175 versus 158, when we're taking a look at 64 versus 32 gigabyte kits, that's just 11%, and with how dynamic these games are, we could probably say that you know, it's close enough to kind of throw out. But the 0.1% lows are where things get weird. So when we take a look at the 64 and 96 gigabyte kits, they're very similar with 158 and 151. However, the 32 gigabyte kit is sitting at just 81 FPS. Now again, very dynamic game, so maybe if we ran it more times, these results would change. But if these results are to be believed, then we're talking about in a best case scenario, 
Once again, with the 64 versus 32 gigabyte kit, a difference of 95% in favor of the higher capacity kit, which is absolutely insane. But what about another game? Let's go ahead and take a look at another very dynamic game that could be stressing your RAM a lot. So this time, let's take a look at Fortnite. And here, once again, 4K max settings. By the way, I ran all my games at 4K because I wanted to stress the memory as much as possible. But here, once again, you can see the average frame rate is basically identical between all three kits. And even the 1% low is basically identical, once again, between all three kits. But here, again, on the 0.1% lows, a massive difference between these three different kits with the three different capacities. The 32 gigabyte kit had a horrible 22 FPS for the 0.1% low. Now I do wanna let you guys know, again, very dynamic games, things can change a lot, and Fortnite is one of those games that I see a lot of people complaining about having some frame drops. So this is, even though it looks really bad, kind of common for this game but it actually got a lot better on the 64 gigabyte kit where it was as high as 46 fps still not great but that's over two times as we're seeing on the 32 gigabyte kit and then with the 96 gigabyte kit it got just a little bit better as well bringing that score to 2.4 times higher than the 32 gigabyte kit which is again absolutely ridiculous now still not a super great result and with how dynamic these games are i think we could say that the 64 and 96 gigabyte kits they're around the same amount of performance and guys i did want to include more results i had modern warfare 2 in there as well but the results were so bad for all three after that last update that they pushed out that i just felt like the results were completely useless and i just didn't have time to include any other games right now now in the future let me know in the comments below if you want me to investigate more games you know just a couple of applications and a couple of games is definitely not as much as we'd like to see before you know saying for certain whether or not 64 or 96 gigabytes is always going to be better but at least with these results with the time that i had to throw them together it does look like the 64 and 96 gigabyte kits definitely do have an advantage over the 32 gigabyte kits when it comes to the 0.1% lows. If you're someone who does not reinstall Windows often, or maybe you just run a lot of applications in the background, I will tell you that I do personally think there is definitely a benefit from going above 32 gigabytes even for gaming and it's not just the results here that are showing it but it also was like i showed you at the beginning of the video the fact that windows is caching so much memory now i did actually run a quick caching test on the windows 11 dirty install versus a clean install and what i noticed was on the dirty install it was caching in apex i believe up to like 77 gigabytes of ram whereas on the clean install it was closer to the mid 50 gigabytes as there was just no extra junk running in the background. So it can definitely make a huge, huge difference, dirty versus clean installed. Now also mentioned, it seems like probably 64 gigabytes is the sweet spot, or maybe even 48 gigabytes could be the sweet spot. And there probably isn't too much benefit going above that. But for me personally, I'm gonna stick with the 96 gigabyte kit as I do wanna have more memory for more professional workloads if I feel like it's necessary. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that you really should have more than 32 gigabytes to have the absolute smoothest gaming experience? Or do you think that 32 gigabytes is more than enough for gamers in 2023? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.